Radiographic Equipment Testing, Part 2. When you adjust the collimation on the tube housing, the only visual indicator of the actual field size is produced by a light being reflected off a mirror in the tube housing assembly. You may have noticed a variance in your clinical assignments in some x-ray rooms between the light field and the actual x-ray field produced with an exposure. This is due to misalignment of the lead shutters compared to the light projected during collimation. We can test for this a few different ways. The test tools on the right have multiple purposes, one of them being collimator field alignment. The light field should be set to the square on the face of the test tool, and once exposed, the image can be interpreted by measuring the distance between that line on the radiograph and the actual border on the radiation field. Acceptance limits are plus or minus 2% of the SID. Most of these test tools are created for testing at a 40 inch SID, but in metric, that's 100 centimeters, a nice round number to know the value of 2% for acceptance limits. If the SID is 100 centimeters, then the radiation field on the image should be within 2 centimeters of the line that you collimated to. If you don't have this test tool available, you can perform what's called a 9-penny collimator test, seen on the left. Using a clean image receptor, you can collimate to a square smaller than the image receptor size. For each of the four borders, place one penny inside the light field and one penny outside the light field so that the pennies touch one another at the light field border. The ninth penny is simply used for orientation in case your image is flipped. You can also use a radiopaque marker. The idea is that since a penny measures slightly more than 1.9 centimeters, if you can visualize the entire penny on either side of the collimated field on your radiographic image, you'll be outside acceptance limits using a 100 centimeter SID. The collimator field alignment test should be performed semi-annually. As previously mentioned, this tool can be used for additional tests, like vertical beam alignment. When you set your x-ray tube to zero degrees angulation, pointing straight down at the x-ray table, it should be perfectly perpendicular. This test, which is sometimes called beam perpendicularity test in some textbooks, determines if zero degrees at the tube controls truly represents a beam with no angulation at the central ray. A plastic cylinder is used, which is enclosed at both ends, each end contains a small ball bearing that has been specifically placed in the center of the circle on each end. The cylinder is placed on the center of the collimator test tool and an exposure is made. If the BBs are not superimposed on the radiograph, then your x-ray tube is not exactly positioned perpendicular to the image receptor and adjustments need to be made. This should be tested semi-annually and acceptance limits are plus or minus 2 degrees from perpendicular. This test tool allows for collimator alignment, vertical beam alignment, and a third test, central ray alignment, all in one exposure. The central ray should simply be pointed at the crosshairs on the center of the tool where the BBs would be lined up, and the exposure should be accurate within plus or minus 2 centimeters from the light field's central ray. When a new x-ray tube is installed, the actual focal spot sizes for large and small focal spots are rated nominally and typically recorded on the outside of the x-ray tube housing. There's a lot of lenience for accuracy here due to the complicated nature of the tube construction and multiple factors affecting beam geometry. A baseline reading should be taken and archived when every new x-ray tube is installed for comparison to annual tests and or if testing is needed between annual recommendations when a loss in resolution may be visibly noticed suddenly. Each focal spot size can be as much as 50% larger for focal spots smaller than 0.8 millimeters, or 40% larger for focal spots larger than 0.8 millimeters than the rated nominal size referenced by the manufacturer. As x-ray tubes age and experience normal wear and tear, changes in the filament and the anode will reduce resolution as the focal spot size increases over time. 
This should be tested annually, and though there are many tools to test for resolution, the preferred tool is the slit camera, which looks similar to the cylinder for the beam perpendicularity test. Instead of BBs, there is a thin metal template with finely cut slits in groups of three, which run crosswise and lengthwise. We have also experimented with this tool in your exposure principles lab. Once the exposure is made, you should examine each set of vertical and horizontal lines from largest to smallest. The last set of observed lines that are not blurred together should be determined, which will serve as the highest resolved pair. The blur points may vary between horizontal and vertical slits, but care should be taken when aligning the tool prior to exposure so that one of the set lines is parallel to the long axis of the x-ray table and the other parallel to the short axis. Automatic exposure control should be monitored or repeatability. Your textbook suggests five exposures should be taken at the ion chamber to measure the output. The same test should be performed at various density settings when using AEC as well. This should be checked annually with acceptance limits plus or minus 10% within each radiographic room, but with a noted 20% variance is acceptable when comparing different rooms within the same department.